for those who for those who are just joining in on the webinar uh, thanks for joining and uh, we'll be taking a couple of minutes just to make sure uh, we have a full attendance and then we will be starting shortly so thanks for your patience And meanwhile, if if anybody wants to say hello, then we've got a chat box over there, so you can uh, you can just type in your name and just say hello as well. Good to see a lot of people saying hello. That's nice. Wait for just one more minute, maybe. Okay, great. I think we can start then. So um, welcome everybody to the third edition of our Commodity in Focus webinar series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about uh, metals uh, and in particular steel. Now, why steel in particular? Well, steel being one of the largest industries in the world, um, it has applications spanning not just from industrial products and machines, but also for life sciences and consumer goods sector. Today, the inflation that we're seeing in steel, in steel prices is impacting both the demand and supply side. While steel manufacturers uh, have reported uh, higher revenues and margins on the back of renewed demand uh, in what recently was a latent sector for about a decade, we've seen a lot of cost and production pressure come in at the downstream uh, user side of things. In fact, in some sectors, we've also seen uh, you know, millions and billions being wiped off market capitalization because of the pressures uh, that the steel prices are, are posing. Today, I'm joined by my panelists, Anuj and Kanika, both uh, experts on the steel market uh, in the Smart Cube. Anuj and Kanika will be talking today uh, about their analysis of what they expect steel prices to do this year, uh, and also focus on basically what you as a user can do from a risk mitigation standpoint. Are we going to expect prices to stay inflated due to stimulus driven demand, uh, which got pumped in because of COVID? Or do we expect supply pressures to ease off uh, and higher production to take over and put some pressure on prices to come down? We'll know more uh, in the course of uh, the next uh, 40, 45 minutes. In terms of the agenda, quickly walking you through, we'll start first with uh, the overall metal sector where we will we'll talk about um, you know, what's the inflation that we're seeing across base, minor, and precious metals. Uh, Anuj is gonna be starting with that. And he's also gonna be giving his views in terms of what are some of the cost drivers that he's seeing in the market uh, across all of these uh, multiple uh, commodities. We'll then from there move on to uh, the steel market 
uh, we'll touch upon basically how prices of, of steel have been moving in different, uh, different geographies and what's driving that inflation in the market. Uh, Anuj will also give you uh, some views on what are some of the some of the indicators that you as a user uh, can keep track of, which give you an early sign of distress in the market, right? Uh, factors which you probably would not have been tracking already. Um, uh, you know, so this is going to be a very interesting section. So please uh, take note. We'll then move on to Kanika, who's going to be talking about uh, the fundamentals uh, in the market. Uh, what does the demand and supply situation look like? And how is it expected to fare in the future? Especially, you know, giving some examples um, uh, on, 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 on Chinese demand and production as well. And then, obviously, uh, the, the the most interesting part of this presentation uh, is is a look at both the short term as well as the long term view on where steel prices are expected to be heading uh, in this year. And of course, uh, our experts will then have put together also some strategies, right? Uh, both short term, medium term, and long term, uh, in terms of what what you as a category manager, as a buyer, can expect. What are some of the levels, some price levels that you can see in the market, and what those price levels can indicate in terms of what is the coverage, uh, what is the kind of coverage you can take in the market. So basically, planning in advance, and then we'll come back again onto the overall metals market. Uh, again, touching base on base miner and precious metals, and then giving you a view on what we expect as inflation in those three categories as well. And of course, we leave some time towards the end, hopefully for questions and answers. So you'll see there's a tiny little box at the bottom of your screen, which says Q&A. It's either at the bottom or the top, sorry about that. Uh, but yes, throughout the webinar, whatever questions you might have, keep posting those questions. And you as users also have the option of uh, voting some of the questions which you see are interesting. So please don't forget to do that so that we can pick those first. All right, uh, I will now pass it on to Anuj. Anuj, over to you. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today to talk about the metal market. The year 2021 saw huge inflation in prices of base and metal metals. As the lockdowns and travel restrictions were eased amid a successful rollout of, rollout of COVID-19 vaccination across the globe, demand for industrial goods surged and hence the demand for metals. The global economic recovery, fiscal stimulus injected by major economies and expansionary monetary policies also supported the demand rise. Heavy trading activity and stockpiling sentiments in the market further added to uptrading metal prices. However, the global supply didn't move up in the direction of demand which exerted upward pressure on prices of metals. The main reason for supply shortage and spur in prices was production suspension in China for environmental concerns and the country's goal to curb its energy consumption in 2021 in accordance with its 14th five-year plan. Additionally, low hydropower generation due to lack of rainfall in Southwest China further led to decline in smelter operations. Additionally, skyrocketing coal prices impacted the metals, which use coal as part of feedstock in the smelting process. Additionally, historically high upstream energy prices, such as electricity, crude oil, and natural gas led to decline in operating margins of metal processors who in turn reduced their operating rates and added to tight global supply situation. Further, current supply chain disruptions, which included exponential increase in freight rate, shipping charges, container shortages, limited labor availability due to new strains of COVID-19, restricted power supply, blockage of the Suez Canal, exerted upward pressure on prices. Now, coming to the minor metals, as the world were transitioning toward cleaner energy, the prices of essential metals for electric vehicle battery production, such as lithium, cobalt, and nickel, witnessed huge inflation. Further, silicon metal, which is used for cell solar panel production, witnessed huge inflation due to production curves in China. However, Prices of precious metals didn't see a very steep rise. 
the primary reason for this being industrial and manufacturing driven demand for metals as the world was focused on securing necessary raw material to meet up the pent up demand for infrastructural developments and the clean energy transition gold and silver lag behind additionally improvement in global economic environment in second half of 2021 discouraged investment in precious metals coming to the other two key precious metals palladium and platinum both the metals had strong starts in the first half of 2021 and surged 24% and 37% on an year on year basis during first half of 2021 however semiconductor chip shortages in the later half of the year resulted in a sharp decline in automotive production and thus a drop in demand for the two metals the automotive sector accounts for more than 80% of platinum demand while auto catalyst segment accounts for 45% of demand for platinum thus in some instances it can be concluded that 2021 saw positive returns for almost all the metals due to demand and supply imbalance moving on to discuss the steel market dynamic steel prices started witnessing an upward trajectory from september 2020 and broke their long term trading range as visible from charts the steel prices in both the us and europe followed a similar trend prices in the us provided a ceiling to the european prices and increased more steeply since the beginning of 2021 prices found support on 30 day moving average and stayed consistently above the average till they reached their peak in europe prices surged around 190% on an year on year basis in july 2021 whereas in the us prices reached all time peak in september 2021 by increasing 254% on an year on year basis stainless steel prices also increased in a similar fashion due to continuous rise in alloy surcharge prices and tight scrap steel availability in both steel and stainless steel it can be seen that the prices in the us are moving at a 2 to 3 month lag from european prices now coming to the factors that led to such a sharp escalation in prices starting with the supply side in early 2021 we saw steel supply had begun to recover after taking hit during the pandemic however the story changed completely in the second half of the year china which accounts for 57% of the world's total steel production restrained the local mills in tangshan province from commissioning new iron and steel making caulking facilities till march 2022 this was primarily driven by its aim to improve the air quality for the beijing winter olympics further the country also placed strict production curbs on steel production in all major regions from july 2021 onwards and in september the production in the country dropped 21% on an year on year basis these curbs were also part of country's mission to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2026 further repressed economic activities world's inclination towards lower carbon emission during steel production and logistical disruptions led to lower availability of scrap steel which provided additional distress to steel supply in the us about 70% of the steel is produced through electric arc furnace process which uses scrap steel as the key raw material and electricity as a major upstream cost prices of the key raw materials iron ore and coal increased 45% and 138% on an year on year basis respectively leading to a surge in cost of production 
as traditionally to produce one ton of steel, 1.4 ton of iron ore and 0.8 ton of coal is required, which bring us to the dramatically high prices of upstream energy, electricity, natural gas and crude oil, which saw a double or even triple digit increase on a weekly basis in second half of 2021. Coming to demand, the recovery in industrial production, accommodative government policies across major economies with infrastructure-led fiscal stimulus provided additional tailwind to steel demand. Multiple rounds of fiscal stimulus, expansionary monetary initiative in form of reduced interest rates by the EU, the US, China, and India led to increase in demand. Additionally, a record levels of accumulative private savings during the pandemic, which was close to $4 trillion as of March 2021, also led to higher consumption. The global GDP grew by 5.9% on an year-on-year -year basis in 2021, its fastest pace in the past four decades. The world's two biggest economies, the US and China, were at the forefront of this resurgence, with estimated GDP growth of 5.6% and 8.1% respectively in 2021. Additionally, higher freight rates, logistical issues, along with acute labor shortages led to a sharp decline in operating margin and exerted upward pressure on steel prices. After seeing how volatile the steel market has been in the past few months and how the variety of the factors have been influencing the market at the same time, it is extremely important to identify and keep an eye on signals which can help us to be proactive in effectively managing the inflation. We at the Smart Cube consistently monitor the various demand, supply, macroeconomic, business, financial, and economic indicators which help us cause these trends. On your screen, you can see a list of some of the key leading and coincidental in indicators that might give an early sign of distress. In current scenario, in addition to tracking conventional indicators such as demand, supply, prices of raw material, seasonal demand, and supply pattern, it is equally crucial to keep a track of broader economic and business statistics indicators, such as the movement of the US dollar features, PMI indices of different sectors and countries, consumer and business confidence indices, composite leading indicators, US bond yield, unemployment rate, labor costs, to name a few. Along with this, it is it would be important to look for any trade settlement or geopolitical tensions between the countries, as it has been observed that these indicators clearly give heads up of the price trend and timely noticing and acting upon this help us make sound procurement strategies. To illustrate this, let's have a look at our next slide. Starting with the business confidence index, we clearly see in the chart that year-on-year -year growth in BCA and the steel prices follow a similar trend. And BCA and steel prices have a positive correlation of almost 57%. As you can see, the black dots represent the change in trend in the BCA index, whereas green dots represent the change in trend in steel prices. Studying the historical trends, we can see that the BCI started to increase from September 2015 onwards, while steel prices captured this trend in January 2016. Here, BCI gave indication for steel prices four months ahead. Second visible trend is September 2017 decline in BCI, which continued till August 2019. A similar movement on a year-on-year -year basis in the steel prices can be seen from May 2018 to January 2020. 
Similarly, a trend can be witnessed during 2020 and 2021, where business confidence index clearly gave an indication for rise and fall in steel prices. Now, coming to US dollar index, the chart depicts that the steel prices and US dollar index have an inverse relationship of 48% at level. This correlation improves to 55% at a lag of two months. Statistically, this implies that the US dollar index is giving a signal of change in trend in steel prices at an average of two months ahead. Seeing some of the historical trends, in, 2020, in 2014, the US dollar started trending upward from June and stayed on the upward trajectory till March 2015, whereas steel prices took three months to react to these prices and declined from September 2014 to May 2015. This was also the time when two largest steel consuming regions, Europe and China, saw muted demand due to slowdown in economic growth. More recently, during the period of economic recovery from COVID, US dollar index fell from June 20 to May 2021, where steel prices saw a sharp rise from September 20 to 2021, again giving a three-month advanced trend moving for steel prices. Currently, US dollar index is seen on an upward trajectory from June 2021 onwards. Following a similar historical trend, steel prices started to decline after four months starting October 2021. Now, the question that arises what would be the ultimate price movement for steel in 2022? What would be the dominating factors driving the price trend? What could you do to mitigate some of those risks? For this segment, I would like to call my colleague Kanika to take us through the outlook for steel market and suggest strategies to manage the steel price inflation in 2022. Thank you, Anuj. So uh, before talking about the price outlook, I'll first talk about the fundamental outlook for the steel market. So in 2022, the global supply of steel is estimated to grow 2.8% on account of likely ease in production cuts in China. Um, strict production cuts in China in 2021 as part of country's mission to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2035 led to a 3% decline in the production during the year. However, in a guideline issued on 7th February, China's Ministry of uh, Industry and Information Technology has made this timeline more accommodating rather than specifying a particular year. Further, uh, now that the Winter Olympics are about to get over and winter steel curbs from northern China are expected to ease by the end of the first quarter, steel production in China is likely uh, to increase 1.3% in 2022. But steel output cuts might begin again in Eastern China from late August to September to reduce emissions for the 19th Asian Games, which are scheduled to happen in Hangzhou city from 10th to uh, 25th September. Additionally, lingering supply chain disruptions and uh, additionally, linear supply chain disruptions and power crunch will continue to add uncertainty to this outlook. The supply of steel is uh, also likely to increase in the US as three major steel capacity expansion projects are underway in the southern US, uh, which are expected to come online by mid-2022. These new plants would add approximately 5.3 million tons to the US steel capacity. Further, uh, the imports of steel are also expected to increase in the US as the section 232 steel tariff dispute between the US and the major exporting countries is settling. Uh, the dispute has already uh, been settled with the European Union and Japan and talks and similar talks are 
continuing with the UK and South Korea as well. So effective from 1st January 2022, duty-free imports of 3.3 million tons of steel per year from EU to the US are allowed. Imports exceeding this limit will, however, be subject to a 25% import tariff. Now, similarly, uh, from 1st uh, April onwards, so from 1st April onwards, uh, US will suspend the 25% import tariff on 1.25 million tons of steel imports from Japan. The country has also initiated uh, talks regarding the same with the UK and South Korea as well. And this increase in supply in the US is likely to keep a lid on the domestic prices, which also acts as a ceiling to the global prices, hence keeping the steel prices in 2022 in a check. Now, uh, coming to uh, demand, <clears throat> the global steel demand is expected to increase 2.8% in 2022, majorly driven by accommodative fiscal stimulus announced by major economies. The key infrastructural investments in the world to look forward include the 1.2 trillion US dollar bipartition infrastructure framework, together with the proposed Build Back Better framework, which is currently under consideration in the USNA and would add approximately $4 trillion in addition to the government spending over the next 10 years. And estimates from the American Iron and Steel Association suggest that about 5 million tons of new steel demand is created for every $100 billion in new investment, indicating a significant boost to the US steel consumption from the new package over the outlook period and beyond. Now, coming to the largest steel consuming country of the world, China, the Chinese government aims to fund massive infrastructure programs to manage the deleveraging of its residential property sector. New projects have already been proposed for provinces such as Zhangxi and Hubei, and more are expected to be announced as the year turns. This is expected to boost new infrastructure and construction activity from early 2022, uh, as the construction sector alone accounts for 52% of the global steel consumption. Along with this, the 750 euro billions uh, EU next generation economic recovery package is also expected to add upward momentum to steel demand. Further, in October, the Indian government announced a 1.3 trillion US dollar integrated infrastructure plan which aims to boost industrial production and economic growth in the country uh, with a focus on expanding transport infrastructure and the use of cleaner fuels. However, for the outlook period, a slowdown of, in China's residential property market remains a key risk to the growth prospectus and steel demand. Other risks include new outbreaks of the pandemic, lingering supply chain disruptions, and the resumption of power and coal uh, shortages. Moving on to the price trend, uh, price trend analysis. Currently, we are seeing the steel prices declining, and this price correction is led by a slowdown in the pace of economic recovery. Reduced momentum uh, of pent-up demand, the normalization of fiscal policies, and partial withdrawal of monetary policies to control the inflationary prices accompanied with resurgence of newer waves of the pandemic. Focusing on the outlook, we can see that the prices started retreating from the peak in quarter four, 2021, and are likely to continue this trend in the short term. The prices have already declined about 29% from this peak in September. And as can be perceived from the technical analysis, the prices will move down for the next two to three months and may find support at the levels of 1020 and further at $980 per short term. And in March, prices could be in the range of 
1060 to 1015 per short turn uh, now let's have a look at how the market is going to behave in the year 2022 as you can see in the chart uh, the prices have already uh, declined and are expected to decline from the high levels seen in 2021 however they would still continue to remain well above their pre covid levels in the charts on your screen you can see that we have created certain scenarios for the steel market outlook the dash green line shows our average price forecast level this price trend is driven by the anticipated rise in steel production both globally as well as regionally as we have already discussed additionally predicted fall in key raw material prices uh, such as iron ore coal and scrap steel and rise in the operating rate at steel mills would all act to be bearish for the market however this forecast may be impacted by some key risk factors which might result in either a relatively lower or an upper range outlook hence the smart cube has modeled different scenarios to provide a holistic view of the market and help you manage inflation effectively and efficiently for instance we expect steel production in north america to rise 3 to 5% in 2022 driven by expected improvement in the operating rates and plant capacity expansion in such a case we expect steel prices to be low range bound however if this rise in production does not materialize due to any unforeseen circumstances then the fall in steel prices would likely be in the upper range outlook uh, another very important scenario would be iron ore prices we estimate that if the prices of iron ore are in the range of uh, let's say 170 to 190 dollars per ton it will be a relatively optimistic outlook for steel prices as the prices would then be near to our lower range forecast however if the fall in iron ore prices is restricted and they lie somewhere between the range of let's say 190 to 210 uh, dollars per ton then the market would be slightly bullish and the prices would likely be closer to the upper range forecast as can be seen in the chart taking another scenario into consideration if the supply chain disruptions is by the second quarter of the year then the market would be more bearish and be near to the low range outlook however if these disruptions continue to linger till the fourth quarter then prices would be in the upper range forecast similarly uh, we have also modeled in expectation of new covid variants in the year 2022 in the event of a severe new variant which is immune to the vaccines and can result in high hospitalization rates uh, this may push countries to reintroduce lockdowns which could disrupt economic activities resulting in a bearish impact on steel prices and push it closer to our lower range outlook however if two to three covid variants of milder intensity similar to that of the omicron variant uh, will have a relatively less impact on steel prices keeping it near our upper range outlook now keeping all these assumptions in mind we expect steel prices to fall 30 to 38% year over year in 2022 but still be at a premium from the 2019 levels now so what is it that you as a buyer can do to plan in advance we at the smart cube have uh, some propositions for the procurement managers to consider during the year so the steel market uh, mostly the buyers prefer to buy around 60 to 70% of their requirements through contract buying and depend on spot trading for the remaining requirement this allows buyers to mitigate some supply chain risk to a certain extent and take advantage of any significant drop in spot prices 
So coming to our recommendations, looking at the short term, since the market is still very volatile due to uncertainty around production in China, amid the mandated production cuts, COVID-induced restrictions, etc., we recommend buyers to indulge in need-based buying for March. However, if prices fall below $1,015 per short ton, buyers can look to build inventories for quarter two. This is our optimistic, or you can say the lower range outlook for the month. Further, uh, given the persistent logistical risks which continue to plague the supply chains, we advise procurement managers to evaluate options to engage with local traders, especially for lower volume requirements to avoid longer lead times. Now, in the medium term, an anticipated drop in energy costs and iron ore prices along with likely improvement in global supply driven by new capacity additions in the US and Asian region by mid 2022, as well as ease in China's production cut, may push prices down and buyers can look to enter into quarter three contract negotiations uh, at prices in the range of $970 to $940 per short term, which would lie between our average to lower range price outlook. Overall, buyers can look for long-term booking when prices are trading in $960 to $890 per short term. Uh, buyers are also suggested to aggregate their demands and negotiate bulk deals to avail volume-based discounts. They should also leverage their understanding of suppliers' costs and margins to develop an effective negotiation strategy. And for higher volume purchases, buyers should evaluate the requirements and keep a close eye on the prices of raw materials, business indicators, and macroeconomic developments to establish a competitive procurement scheme. Now, uh, let's have a look at how the entire metal basket would look like in 2022. Anuj, over to you. Thanks a lot, Kanika. Like we have seen the downward movement in the steel market, the prices of other base and marine metals are also on the correction path after making a peak in first quarter of 2022. And the story is very much similar to that of steel since the pace of global economy, economic recovery is projected to ease to 4.9% or an year-on-year -year basis in 2022 as the pent-up demand recedes and pandemic-related fiscal and monetary support is withdrawn. Expectation of an improvement in supply as several smelters who had closed or lower production in first half of in second half of 2022 are set to resume operations. In China, an easing energy situation alongside possible increase in production after Beijing Winter Olympics from March can lead to rise in supply and soften metal prices. Further, operating rates at metal smelters in Europe are also expected to improve with an anticipated fall in coal, electricity, and fuel prices. Demand, on the other hand, is likely to remain moderate. Global economy is expected to grow at a slower pace of 4.9% on an year-on-year -year basis in 2022 from a projected growth of 5.9% in 2021. Global industrial production growth will deaccelerate from 6.9% in 2021 to 4.3% in 2022, translating into softer demand for metals. Further, the US Federal Reserve is likely to announce its first interest rate hike in March 2022, tightening the US monetary policy and is expected to further increase interest rates in mid 2022, which may weigh down on metal prices. New outbreaks of pandemic and ongoing supply chain issues are downside risk to global growth and metal prices over the outlook. However, infrastructural investments announced by major economies and demand recovery from the automotive sector 
as the semiconductor chip shortage is in second half of the year could limit the price fall. Additionally, supply concerns with escalation over Russia-Ukraine conflict and possible stricter sanctions by the US and European countries could impact the metal prices in the short term, as Russia is one of the major producer of metals globally. Russia accounts for almost four to 7% of global production for cobalt, nickel, aluminum, and copper, whereas it is a leading producer of platinum, accounting for 40% of global production and 10% of global production of gold and platinum. However, the overall market for the metal is bearish and it's, the prices are expected to fall from by the end of the 2022 as, as, as comparison to the beginning of 2022. However, the price would stay well above the pre-COVID levels. That has been all from our end for the metal market. We now open the forum for Q&A. Thanks, Anuj. And uh, thanks, Kanaka, as well. Uh, by the looks of it, uh, sounds a bit positive uh, if you're saying that the market is bearish. Um, but again, I think as buyers, everybody should remain cautious uh, and keep a very close watch. Um, we'll now jump on to the Q&A. Um, Kanika, this is a small feedback for you. I think we couldn't see your video uh, when you were presenting. Um, I think there's a bit of a technical glitch that you might want to sort out uh, when you're answering the Q&A. So, um, so we've got a couple of questions here and we've got some uh, votes also that have come in. Um, so I'll start first with Ernesto's question. Um, with geopolitical, with recent geopolitical situation, is the outlook still valid? And how will it change uh, or how will the situation change this during the next four weeks? Yes, so um, with the escalation in the uh, Ukraine and Russian conflict, the metal prices uh, particularly are uh, expected to increase in the short term. But however, going forward, we expect that uh, with the increase in production in China will offset the conflict and in the long term, the situation should be in control uh, with respect to Ukraine and Russia. Perfect. Karika, do you concur? Yeah, I definitely agree with Anuj that this would be a short term phenomenon and in the longer term, this would not impact the metal market and talking about steel. So uh, Ukraine would not impact steel much since it only accounts for 1% of the global steel production. However, Russia uh, could impact to a certain amount since it uh, accounts for 4% of the global steel production and 8% of the total exports of steel. This could be the direct impact on uh, steel production and output. Some indirect impact would be a rise in the production cost and some trade dislocations due to the war. But I also suspect that these would be sh uh, short-lived and in the longer term, prices would fall only. Perfect. Thanks for that, Kanika. And uh, we also have uh, another expert on the call, uh, Hemant, uh, as a panelist. Hemant, would you like to also chip in, give your views? Yeah, sure. I think uh, uh, we would look at that uh, as a you know kind of a scenario. Uh, if it, if the invasion would happen, uh, you know, then how prices would react. So I agree with Anuj and Kanika that even if the invasion uh, of Ukraine uh, and Russia conflict, sorry, uh, invasion of Russia happened into Ukraine, then prices will definitely rise, uh, at least uh, if not for steel, but definitely for aluminum, uh, you know, and other base metals like nickel, uh, you know, for a short term term or period, uh, say one or two months, and then prices will definitely market will definitely account for this kind of uncertainty and you know prices will then try to stabilize because you know russia accounts for six percent of global aluminium and say seven percent of nickel production and 
trade sanctions, possible trade sanction, uh, you know, in the invasion scenario by US or your US or Europe on Russia may, you know, disrupt the exports of metals. So any disruption could lead to, you know, uh, you know, at least I would say 10 to 12 percent uh, 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 in aluminum and nickel prices from the current levels because that's what we've seen in the previous conflict as well. You know, the one that happened in 2014, the U Ukraine Russia conflict. Uh, so that time as well, I think prices shot up. Uh, you know, for a temporary period of say one month or two months. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that. Thank you all. Uh, the next question is from Bernard. Uh, can you share what you foresee in terms of trends forecasts for the next 12 months for uh, uh, steel? I think steel we've already covered. Uh, maybe we wanted to type stainless steel. So stainless steel, aluminium, and copper. And similarly, what do you think will be the effects of the Russia-Ukraine situation on the prices of uh, aluminium and other metals for that matter for the next few months? Anish, would you want to take that? Yeah. So with respect to the impact of um, you know, Russia-Ukraine conflict on aluminium prices, so uh, Russia is, you know, account for almost 5 to 6 percent of uh, global aluminium production. And uh, its uh, company, Russell, is one of the major contractors for some of the countries. And, and the conflict will definitely have an impact on aluminium prices in the short term. And if the uh, if the uh, sanctions are imposed and sector sanctions are imposed by the Europe and the US, then it can uh, have a uh, surge uh, in the short term and there can be uh, a slight increase in overall base prices uh, over the next 12 months as well. Whereas uh, for the forecast for the 12 months, uh, for aluminum and copper, we are expecting, you know, the prices will uh, form a peak by uh, end of Q1 or early Q2, and then there will be a rationalization and decline in the prices as the operating rates uh, in the in China increases after the Beijing Olympics. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, next question: um, What is the fundamental reason for considering U.S. dollar as a key leading indicator for steel prices? So uh, US dollar index uh, impacts all the metal prices or uh, any commodity prices because as the dollar index uh, appreciates the, it, the commodity uh, become uh, expensive. Uh, so it's cheaper, that's why it uh, decreases, the price of the commodity decreases. Fundamentally speaking, uh, the US dollar index captures the expectation of the market with respect to interest rates and monetary supply. So, for example, if the market is expecting interest rate hike by the US Fed, then that sentiment will be already be incorporated in the US dollar index, even before the, the US Fed increases the interest rate. So that's why, uh, you know, it acts as a good leading indicator for steel and metal prices. Okay. All right. Um, next question is, what has been the methodology while building different scenarios for steel price forecast? Uh, okay, so to build these scenarios, we have first studied uh, our historical trend analysis. We have studied the data for the past 20 years and saw how different factors are impacting the markets. Then we studied various variables which um, impacted the prices and selected a few to incorporate in the model. Now, the, mo the variables which we uh, could not incorporate in the model were, uh, have been taken care of through our uh, expertise in the market. Since we track metals uh, on a regular basis, we add another layer of expertise on it through our uh, human intelligence through some adjustments. So uh, that has been the major uh, Method methodology for the forecast and coming to the scenarios. So uh, like I talked about the iron ore prices. So while we followed the similar strategy while forecasting iron ore also. So when we had different uh, price ranges for iron ore and put it into the steel prices, we got the numbers for steel. But then again, we are not just feeding the numbers which the model is giving us. We are definitely uh, working on them more and adding 
our expertise and coming up with this forecast, looking at all, all the fundamental developments in the market. Um, are such indicators, uh, DCI, USD, also applicable for other metals? Uh, yes, clearly. So now mostly most of the metals are denominated in US dollars. So any uh, metal which is denominated in US dollar, the impact would be similar to that of the steel. Similarly, uh, business Com confidence index, the BCI, this uh, also gives an indication for other metals as well. The time period could be different. Like for steel, they give an indication five to six months ahead. So in other metals, it may vary, but yes, they act as a good leading indicator for others. Yeah, just to add to Kanika's point, uh, for some of the metals, specifically for minor metals, uh, you know, whose production is concentrated in one or two regions, uh, you know, have a completely different market dynamics. Uh, so for example, uh, magnesium or uh, manganese metal whose production is, you know, only concentrated in China, which has more than 95% of the production globally, uh, has a different uh, market dynamics and it completely depends on uh, how the production curves and uh, pollution related curves are uh, going on in China. And that impacts the uh, commodity prices. And that has basically led to the low correlation or uh, with the, these broader indices. Okay. I hope that uh, answers your question. Um, as already queried, what about the forecast taking into account the ukraine russian conflict? So I think we've already answered that one. Uh, this is an interesting one. Are you using uh, artificial intelligence in any of your commodity forecasts yet? Anush, do you want to take that one? Yeah. So yes, uh, we are using uh, AI to forecast some of the commodities uh, such as brand crude oil, uh, where we use uh, approximately 250 odd variables, which can uh, you know impact the brand crude oil prices and building sophisticated algorithms to uh, provide the forecast. And we are also using um, the news and the sentiment analysis to capture the market information to adjust the forecast. Super, great. Um, what are the main reasons behind the inverse relationship between uh, USD and steel prices? So uh, the main reason for the inverse relationship is uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, as the dollar index appreciates, the, uh, the commodity become uh, expensive and that's why uh, it decreases. And another one is um, as the dollar index increases, so it signifies that um, there is a tighter monetary policies uh, and the expenditure will decrease. And that's how the demand or consumption of steel and other base metal decreases. And that's why there is an inverse relationship. Super. I hope with all of these questions that you answered, everybody is happy with the answers or the responses that you've been you've uh, you've gotten. If not, uh, please do let us know if you've not been able to answer those questions. Um, how the situation will impact previous precious? Sorry, how the situation will impact precious and base base metals differently, or would it be similar? Uh, I think the the situation over here, I'm assuming, is uh, Ukraine Russia right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the impact on precious metal will be higher because um, Russia is um, Russia accounts for almost forty percent of production for palladium and ten percent for gold and platinum. So um, the impact on production would be much higher compared to base metal, and that will impact the prices much higher. All right. Perfect. Okay, um, right, and we don't have a question, but we have a thank you very much from Rhiannon. Thanks for that. Great, so if there are no further questions, um, 
I just want to thank everybody for joining and especially to our experts, Anuj and Kanika for walking us through this very interesting presentation for all the hard work that you put in with the analysis. Um, and I hope uh, everybody who joined uh, um, found it useful and valuable. See, this is the third uh, edition of the webinar series that we've done. So uh, it's just only to showcase, obviously, to help you as a buyer and category manager to make better decisions. And if you feel there is something that you would like to discuss with us separately, privately about your current business problems, um, how you how you managing the category, um, you know, how you how you mitigating some of the inflation, and what are some of the best practices that you can adopt, right, in understanding what are the benchmarks you should be using, um, you know, and so on and so forth. Please reach out to us. Uh, please write to us, uh, and we'll be happy to help uh, help you and talk to you. And uh, we also have. Um, our own digital intelligence platform called Amplify Pro, uh, where there are thousands of different commodity indices. There are uh, sourcing location insight, uh, sort of uh, insight generators, uh, tariff data, cost structure data, um, you know, uh, category insights, and so on and so forth. Um, and you are related to the metal sector as well. So for all the all the category managers and buyers um, who would like to read more about this and would like to also sort of understand a little bit more about some of the categories please head over to amplify pro um, sign up uh, it'll only take two minutes and you'll also find a lot of white papers and blogs and thought leadership over there that can help you um, you know sort of uh, uh, understand the analytics and intelligence and, and drive it better uh, for, for value delivery in your organization and with that i think we'll close this webinar um, thank you everybody for joining and uh, See you on the next one. Thank you, everybody.